Okay, so I wanted to do a quick demo of um, my PMT test setup that I put together. And um, this is actually after I went through a bring up process using just the photo cathode by itself with no multiplication. And uh, I'll probably shoot a longer video about the details of bringing up a PMT for which you have no data about. Um, but for now, I'm just going to show you that this tube can go into the photon counting region even though it only has six dynodes. So I've got the tube here wrapped up and it's got a really neat layer of aluminum foil and then a couple layers of heat shrink and then it's wrapped up really tight in um, electrical tape. And I, I want to note that even though there's like 1600 volts involved with this right now, the electrical tape is not giving me even the slightest hint of a problem in terms of limitations of its uh, electrical insulation. It does, however, leak light. It's not really the greatest material to light-proof things. And so I spent all night chasing light leaks by shining little LEDs on different parts of the tubes and trying to put a piece of tape over it. And that was a huge pain, but I did get down into the photon counting region finally. So just quick notes on the setup. My fastest quad op amp into BNC up to the scope. And uh, you can see some lab electrical noise and also the noise floor of the amplifier if you if you look carefully. There you go. Yeah. So um, uh, to, in order to operate this thing, it, the lights still need to be off. So um, it's still not light proof enough. It, it just blows it away if I have the lights on. So if you'll bear with me for a second, I'm actually going to close up the electrical shield a little bit more. Improves things a little bit. And then um, I'm going to turn the lights off. So. Alright, so the lights are off and I can now apply some tension to this tube. And so I'm going to do so with the camera pointed at the screen so that you can see what happens as the voltage is slowly brought up on this tube. So power is applied now. You can see some more electrical noise, but also, I don't know how clear this will be on the camera, a hailstorm of little spikes. Yeah, I don't know how clear this is going to be at all. These are the dark counts. With no light applied, I'm still getting these little spikes. They actually go up pretty high, although so that it may not show up on the screen that there there we go that looks okay so yeah even in complete darkness i'm getting a few thousand counts per second um and that's due to radioactivity of the materials used to construct the tube um thermionic emission is a big problem especially when you're applying such high voltages to so few dynodes and um also maybe residual gas in there too so uh, I'm going to have to build some system to discriminate between these pulses and the ones due to scintillations of some material I attach to the face of these tubes. But it's just pretty interesting to see the effect of, you know, individual particles just easily measurable on a scope screen. So um, what was the other point I wanted to make? Uh, just that, I guess, with my little oscillators, low frequency oscillators, and LEDs, I was able to watch light pulses go from, you know, a solid analog signal with no noise <laughs> to, like, fuzzy square pulses down to, like, these showers of things like this. So I was able to step the voltage up and up and up and, wa and go all the way from, you know, milliamps to single photons. So that's amazing. Photomultiplier tubes are absolutely amazing. So that's it. Thanks for watching.